Like I said, I started when I was 16 and a half and I finished when I was probably early 30s, so probably 15 years. Yep. And I just want to do something for the community. Well, the first call out I ever had was actually a fatality with electrocution. It was a bit daunting. We had to uh, take this fella and, and resuscitate him on the way, but we'd presumed that he'd deceased, but we still had to do that. On the way home, we sort of, we talked about it and that was probably the only counselling we ever got to do with it, so yeah. It does take a bit of time out of your day, but uh, the rewards are there, knowing that you're helping the community doing things for that, like that, yes. Uh, probably the last five, five years of the service, the last call out unfortunately was a couple of girls that I knew. Um, most times with fatalities you had to take them to the hospital uh, but not actually take them into the hospital they had to get a doctor out there to uh, certify that they'd be de that had deceased and then you had to go and do all the, f all the formalities in the morgue and uh, sort them set them up on the uh, on the morgue tables and, and all that sort of stuff so that wasn't very pleasant but these two young people that I knew um, in my last few years of the ambulance it was just getting a bit too much for me and and uh, I didn't feel like I, I wanted to do, this, do that sort of thing so uh, in the in the morgue and I got somebody else to do that but and that was pretty traumatic we didn't really get any counselling um, as far as uh, after the accident uh, we we had a cup of coffee with a couple of the ambulance officers in Narracourt but um, we probably spent um, a, a few hours afterwards amongst ourselves talking about a little bit but that's all all we had and so we had to get on with life so a lot of people involved with road accidents or uh, thinking about driving and drinking and and uh, driving recklessly probably don't take into consideration the trauma it causes for the ambulance officers the uh, uh, fire department and uh, more so probably for the policeman that in a small country town like this uh, he knows everybody and uh, it's uh, very upsetting for him to go around to somebody he knows and, and tell them that they're, you know, one of their family is deceased. Listendale, it's just a, it's a nice community, it's a, a small community. From a policing point of view, I enjoy policing in towns such as Listendale because I feel that um, I can have a greater impact on uh, a positive impact in a town. People are generally excellent. I try to be friendly with them. I'm not uh, there to scare people. I'm just there to do my job, so I find that when I uh, speak to people in that way, that they respond positively. They know the rules, they know that um, if you drive a vehicle, you, you can be stopped at any time and breath tested. They know that if you're speeding, you're likely to be stopped, and it's only very rare that people uh, are upset by it. In the Lucendale Policing District, there's been a large number of fatalities over the years, but they tend to have been spread fairly well, and um, but saying that, just on the edge of my area, towards Narracourt, there's a bridge called the Mosquito Creek Bridge, and that's, uh, I would refer to that as a black spot. There's been two fatalities there, very close together, in a fairly short time frame. Car accidents um, are very rarely an accident, in my opinion. There's always a contributing factor to a car accident. Um, in the country, unfortunately, um, a very high percentage of car accidents are caused by a number of things, and they are speeding, uh, drink driving, and inattention, so people not concentrating. You can see the trailer's starting to veer off onto the incorrect side of the road. Roughly speaking, the statistics are drink driving contributes to around 30% of the road fatalities in the country, and speeding attributes to, uh, contributes to about another 30%. So, in a country town, often people might have been to a party, they might have been to a, a licensed premises of some type, a hotel or a club. They'll generally drive, they'll always know they're over the limit, but there is a mentality in the country that 
um, drink driving is okay and that, that the, um, they're not going to be affected by the consequences of it, i.e. having a crash and dying. For the, people, for the young people of Lucendale who are my concern, I would really ask them to drive sensibly, to obey the speed limits and to not drink and drive. There, uh, as I mentioned, there is a culture in most small towns, and Lucendale is included in this, that drink driving is okay. Uh, I've witnessed it myself, uh, people have told me that it's okay, and um, clearly, the, as I mentioned, the statistics show that it's not and it contributes to a great deal of grief in small country towns. I'm Margaret Wilkes, um, Mummy Wilkes more commonly known as. I've been here 41 years. My name is George Mellon. Uh, I came up here in 1940. Can you, can you tell us where we are today? In the Lucendale Cemetery. Beautiful yeah. place. Cool. <laughs> And can you tell us about some of the, the gravestones that we see here today? Can you tell us about um, any of the local people that have been involved in car accidents that you know of? Uh, yes, there's a few. There's uh, Helen Mason and Jennifer Atwell. They were killed just out of Lucendale. And Andrew McRae, he was killed on the Heinham Road coming home from football. And where were they? Where, where did they have their accidents? Helen and Jenny were just out of Lucendale, about oh, a kilometre, I guess, just past the council depot. And um, Andrew was on the Heinham Road, just near the Don Swamp there. Cool. Are there any others that you can think of? Uh, Susan Mason and her son Lynn, they were killed on the Coorong Road coming home from Adelaide. Okay. Have you ever been personally affected by someone who's had a car accident? Oh, I lost a son, he's buried at Kingston. Yeah. Yeah, cool. What happened in his accident? Uh, well, we don't rightly know. He was talking on the phone and I, I think he was putting the phone back down on the cradle. That's the only explosion I've got. And he ran across the road and hit a tree near the meatworks, other side of the meatworks. And is he here today? He... Uh, no, he's in Kingston. He's, he's buried in Kingston. Yeah. There's a black, black post on the Heinham Road where he was killed. Is there anything you guys would like to say to the young people in this area about driving safely Slow on the road? Slow down. Don't drink and drive. What about you, Joyce? I second that one. Yeah.